uh, you talked a lot about self exploration and all of us need to internalize and understand and explore how different is it from self introspection <coughs> that is one second is that the, i was just seeing this journey of universal human values adoption of right understanding right feeling and uh, limiting the physical factors to just about what is adequate does one require patience is it a quality or is it a value yeah good yeah yes i have done the yeah, good to the the uh, so, so is patience a quality or a value yeah. in sense that's all that's of that's us that's have to the first is about introspection and self exploration yeah we say we say the human resource and all should self introspection yeah so what we are saying is that we have defined what is self exploration right number one is asking this question to yourself whether this proposal is naturally acceptable to me and second is verifying whether it will lead to mutual happiness mutual fulfillment or not so this is what we have clearly defined now when you say self introspection you have to define what it is and then we will be able to see whether it is same as self exploration or not so from our side we have defined what is self exploration what right. we need now when you are saying self introspection find out if this is what you mean is fine if you think it is something different then you can ask yourself whether self introspection will do or will need all this you know to be done in terms of verifying on the basis of our own natural acceptance and verifying on the basis of our mutual you know fulfillment experiential validation generally when you say self introspection you try to look into what you have been doing right there do we have the basic difference for what is right right and when we work out in our behavior what will it look like if that is that basic difference is there then it will become equivalent to self exploration right. if that basic difference is not there you can keep feeling that i have not done good and i would like to do better but we do not know what is that better so what we are saying is that yes we must look into what we have been doing but then important thing is that we should know what is better or what is the best right. is right and then <coughs> think that this what we have seen as right is going to lead to mutual fulfillment most of us do self introspection when things go wrong actually yeah this is what i'm saying ah. so that is not enough right that is necessary but not enough we have to reach to this self exploration in terms of right understanding and right feeling yes right regarding that second one the patience you know? yes yes we need patience when we try to work with the society we work with the system in this society right so we have to have that patience is it a quality or is it a value <laughs> yeah when, uh, when we come to this harmony in human in the society yeah. our next point of discussion we will define there this value of patience okay so these nine feelings we have defined with respect to our relationship with other human being right mm. but when it comes to working on the, working in the society the level of system mm. then yes we need patience so are these uh, are these eight feelings embedded in love or are the nine feelings constitute love yeah this i we have been saying before also but i can uh, we it read this love is the complete value right okay so we have to have this complete value in us mm. once we have this then all other feelings are you know we can see you know are the expression of this feeling of love mm. expression of this feeling of love at different levels right yes so that is why we are calling it complete value 
So trust we are calling as foundation value because from there things start. Yes, yes, yes. And love we are calling as complete value because once we have this feeling of love, everything else is included in it. Everything else, you know, feeling of affection, for example, care, for example, guidance, right. all they are included in this feeling of love. Right. So when I feel related to the other and to everyone, this is what I will do. I will work for their development of the self, their development of the body. So is love multidimensional? So it sounds like uh, when I work only for individual, then I'm very limited to. So when love happens, does one have to be uh, seeing all the that four directions? That is uh, human being, family, society, and nature, or any one at any time will be fine. When you're saying you feel related to all human ah. being and rest of nature, hmm. then everything is covered. The whole nature, every unit in nature is covered. So I have to take care of all. The individual, the family, the society, the nature. All that we have to take, you know. At least we have to be concerned about it. Right. We have to have this feeling of relationship for every unit in nature. And we have to have that compassion. Right. And whenever I'm interacting with anything, we'll interact with that feeling of love, feeling of compassion. Sure, sir. I'll think what you said. Thank you so much. Then you answer. Thank you. Thank you, Mandal. Yes. We have Himani Goel. Uh -huh. Namaste, Baya. Hello. Uh, namaste, Baya. Am I audible, Baya? Uh, Baya, I have two doubts actually. Really, one small uh, doubt. Uh, in one slide, uh, morning, May Sharmila Didi was asking regarding this uh, over evaluation and under evaluation. So uh, you had said that suppose somebody, uh, like at times we say that you are a donkey or sometimes we say that, no, you are like, um, you can do anything. So in that slide, sir, Baya, you had said that uh, uh, like uh, we say uh, these things to people when we have the feeling of trust with them. Like we need to uh, establish trust with them. Uh, then only uh, uh, we are saying we are doing a over evaluation. We need to establish the trust first. So what I, my doubt is like, uh, we have, uh, the trust is already there. Then only we are doing this um, over-evaluation and under-evaluation uh, like, uh, of other person. Uh, this was like a uh, little bit confusing for me. Uh, one doubt was this. And uh, second doubt was like, what is the difference between glory and excellence? Like uh, just now in one of the slides, you had said glory and excellence. So how do you differentiate this two? Yes. Uh, I have so to I, that is it, Yeah. I said that this over-evaluation, under-evaluation, otherwise evaluation, none of them is really naturally acceptable. This is what I said. Yes. yes sir. So we I did not connect it to this feeling of trust, as you are saying. I mean, at yes, least sir. I don't remember what uh, was the context which has you know, caused you to oh, okay. to the feeling of trust. I'm saying they are not naturally acceptable and therefore they become source of unhappiness for you and for others. So this is one thing, you know, which I would say. Uh, oh, oh. What would be that when you feel, you know, um, kind of somebody very close and, you know, you have feel that you have established this relationship, then you may come to a stage where you think that these words don't matter, you know, and the other person can take a humor out of it. Then probably it will not be hurting so much. But I would say that even then, you know, it is not very good to go with these things because you do not know when it can hurt the other. When it can hurt the other because the other person is not so stable. So it is better not to use such things. Okay. Regarding your second question, you are saying that this excellence is something which we have to achieve. 
So when somebody has achieved this excellence, we'll have this feeling of reverence. But if somebody is working hard to achieve this excellence, and has not at reached the excellence, we'll have the feeling of glory for him. So this is just a matter of degree. And there have been many great people in the, you know, society for whom we have this glory. Whether they have reached to excellence or not reached to excellence. Okay. The fact that they have made so much of effort to reach, you know, to achieve excellence for themselves and for the society. Therefore, we have this glory for them. Uh, Bhaiya, can you give some example, like uh, if somebody is uh, has achieved glory but not excellence, because I could not differentiate these two. Yeah, so all these great people, for example, you know, they have made effort for excellence. Okay. But they might have some incompleteness, you know, in terms of understanding the harmony, in terms of living in harmony. So it is better to have this glory for them and not make a close set saying that the, what they did is all right. And this is what we have done, you know, many uh, tradition has this problem that they think that they are great people, what they have done is all, you know, and it is complete, right? And there is no scope for further this thing. So there are two problems if we do this. Number one, now we are closed, no more open to other people who are coming up with some, you know, other possibilities of reaching to excellence. And number two is that we are ourselves, you know, not open in terms of exploring further. So many of these traditions who define that their great people are the ultimate and there is no more possibility, they have become, you know, closed kind of, you know, systems, right? And many times they are not able to see the greatness of other people, you know, who uh, have tried for excellence, but maybe in a different way or in some different aspect. So for that, we have enough examples. So, Bhaiya, you mean to say glory example, means fame? You are talking about... People who would praise Gandhiji. And there are large number of people who will condemn Gandhiji. Right? So if we have this feeling of glory for him, we will be open, you know, that he must have understood things the harmony and was living with harmony and professing that harmony right but there may be something left something some lacuna so if somebody else is pointing to that lacuna i will be open to that i will try to understand right and at least ensure that i don't develop that lacuna in myself and i can listen to the other you know with an openness But when you say reverence, right, that is the completeness, you know, and you have no space left. Of course, there also when it comes to understanding, one can have this complete understanding. But when it comes to expression in the world outside, in terms of behavior and work, right, there are many possibilities of expression, of that feeling of love and compassion. So there again, there can be possibility of creativity at the level of expression of those feelings. But I think it is better to keep oneself open. But yes, he was one person who made his you know, effort to achieve excellence. So we'll take inspiration for him, but we'll keep ourselves open. So if we have this feeling of glory and we are keeping ourselves open in terms of 
whether his understanding was complete or not and whether his expression was complete or not so in case of glory we'll keep this two open in case of excellence irreverence we'll keep ourselves you know open at the level of expression even if the other person had this complete understanding and the feeling of love and compassion the expression may be different you know depending on the time and you know situation and people around there may be different expressions so the kind of words that christ would use right and the examples and parables you know that he will use right and the kind of expression that you know sankracharya would use will be very different because they have different context different set of people to whom they are addressing so bhai can we say glory is same as uh, fame uh, like uh, if a person has been uh, able to achieve the fame name fame we can say like so it is similar to glory you have to decide whether when you say fame does it associate this excellence at the background is it in with respect to the excellence or there is no difference of excellence today for example it seems you know that if you have earned lot of money lot of physical facility lot of post position then many people know you right so you are famous but does it indicate excellence does it has the basis on which things are decided you know is there the basis of excellence so today you keep saying that you know the corrupt people they are so much you know those they get so much of name and fame therefore i should also earn more money by any means so this name and fame has to be properly evaluated in the light of excellence isn't it so that means uh, excellence we can relate with intellectual people or uh, like somebody who has um, achieved uh, like uh, uh, who has done some efforts and glory can be through some other means also no no we are not saying that this is not a difference between intellectual and not intellectual we are saying human beings you know everybody is intellectual in the sense that they think they feel the desire so for us everybody is intellectual so what we are saying is that what are you thinking what have you understood so have you understood the harmony are you thinking of relationship are you having the feeling of relationship that is what we are asking so glory will be for those who have you know understood the harmony if not at all levels at least at some levels to some extent and who have this feeling of harmony feeling of relationship thought of relationship thought of harmony they are the people for whom we will have this feeling of glory that they are working for excellence they may be known in this society today the prevailing norms of the society or they may not be noticed even because of this yardstick of the society today today we are just evaluating let's say physical facility you know how much physical facility he has if that is the norm then we will not be able to find out these people properly
जी पे जी पे थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू मानी जी थैंक यू वेरी मच इन फैक्ट वी हैव टू ओपन अप आवर सेल्फ यू नो बिकॉज द नॉर्म्स ऑफ द सोसाइटी टुडे हैव गॉन यू नो सिग्निफिकेंटली रॉन्ग that understanding that feeling of harmony relationship is not there at the base all that we have somehow replaced this physical facility of course we have not been able to replace it completely because we are a very traditional society also so all those values are still there in some way or the other they keep working but if you look at the predominant system and if you look at the education system that we are promoting it is certainly trying to everything uh, on the basis of physical facility so if you are a good student and if you get into iit and you get good grade what does it mean does it mean that you will be able to live better in your family does it mean that you will be able to do something meaningful for the society or does it only mean that you will have a better career in terms of getting a good job which means getting a good salary and having more physical facility that we can see so we have grossly gone wrong in terms of leaving the first two priority of right understanding and right feeling in the relationship and working only for physical facility that is the problem it is yes yes okay so we are at lecture number 16 and the frequently asked questions for lecture number 16 when we say we have affection is it the same as having attachment to one or few people <clears throat> see when we are saying affection what we are meaning is that we have understood the relationship and we have accepted the relationship and with that acceptance of relationship we have this feeling of affection so as far as my happiness is concerned <clears throat> it is born out of my understanding and my acceptance of relationship and therefore having this continuity of feeling of affection so it is not dependent on the other mm. on the other hand when we are talking of attachment what generally it means that i have over evaluated this relationship and i feel that i will get happiness out of the fulfillment in relationship from the other mm. or getting the right kind of feeling or right kind of help from the other so when you say affection this is not you know being dependent on the other or being enslaved by the other but when you say attachment it gives a sense that you know you have become dependent on the other and your happiness or unhappiness depends on the other in case of affection it depends upon you upon your understanding and your feeling and with that understanding and that feeling you have commitment for the other commitment for the fulfillment of your relationship <clears throat> so in a way you are not dependent but at you are responsible so mm. that is how difference between the attachment and affection would look like okay so that is um, affection from my side now how would i know or how would i recognize that someone has a feeling of affection for me or not is there some indicator that we can make out yeah to <clears throat> see if i have this feeling of affection for someone 
then I will express this feeling to the other. Number one, I will be in a state of harmony and happiness with you. Hmm. Number two, when I have this feeling in me, I will express it in terms of, you know, my behavior, in terms of my work with the other. And that we are saying that when I feel related to someone, when I have this feeling of affection and feel related to the other, then I will take care of the other. I will feel responsible, I will have this commitment for the other. And with that commitment, I will be responsible towards the other. And if you look at this detail of, you know, how this responsibility will express itself in my behavior and work, then I can see that I will, you know, when I'm responsible towards the other, I will certainly like to, you know, do whatever I have to do for the self development of the self and development of the body. So when I'm concerned about him, I will take care of both, you know, the self and the body, because now I understand that human being is coexistence of self and the body. Therefore, I take care of both. <clears throat> so when I take care of the self, you know, it is in terms of ensuring this right understanding and right feeling in the self. And when I take care of the body, it is in terms of nurturing the body and protecting the body, ensuring the health of the body. So these are the two things, you know, which will be the expression. Okay. One is taking care of the self. It can be seen in the form of giving the right kind of guidance. And second is taking care of the health of the body of my relative, which is in the form of what we are calling as care. So that will be the indicator. I mean, this is the expression of my feeling of affection. So when you are looking at it from outside, then you can see it in terms of these indicators. You know. Indicators of taking care of, of being responsible towards the relative and expressing itself in terms of taking care of the self and taking care of the body. Mm -hmm. So that's how we can you know, get an idea. But see, ultimately what you will find is that, you know, you are able to see that, yes, the other person has that sense of responsibility. That is what is to be, you know, communicated. In the process, he is doing all this expression. But what is ultimately is to be, you know, communicated is this, that the other person has this feeling perfection and therefore he is, he is responsible towards me. Hmm. Okay. No, um, we are saying that, you know, when there is lack of affection, it is jealousy. But then uh, there are some people for whom I don't have a feeling of affection, but then I'm not jealous of them either. So what would we call that? I mean, Yeah, can you repeat the question? <clears throat> yeah, so uh, we said that uh, when there is lack of affection, it is jealousy. But now if I look at uh, so many people, there are few people for whom I don't seem to have a feeling of affection. But at the same time, I'm not jealous also. So, mm, what would we yes. call that? I mean, <clears throat> generally we call this as indifference. Right? Mm -hmm. That we are indifferent to these people. <clears throat> but what I would say is that, you know, we have to think in terms of this having this feeling of affection and the fulfillment of this feeling of affection, that is, expression of this feeling of affection. These two things we should see separately and understand, you know, this uh, issue. <clears throat> when it comes to feel, expression of the feeling of affection or fulfillment of this relationship, you know, I may not be expressing it to, to everyone around, even not expressing it to those who have this feeling of affection. Right? But <clears throat> I, <clears throat> as far as feeling is concerned, I might have that feeling of affection. 
so expression or the fulfillment is not in of the nature of continuity but the feeling is of the nature of continuity now the point i am trying to make is that there may be many people with whom i am not <clears throat> ensuring the fulfillment with whom i am not expressing this feeling but the important question is not only the expression but also having this feeling so the question basically is that given this choice right i can reframe the question i know that <clears throat> given this choice you know what will be your natural acceptance to be related to the other or not to be related to the other to be related yeah so that is the main issue now whether you call this as you know uh, jealousy or not call it as jealousy or call it as indifference i think for me it is okay so what so, we, what we are saying is that what is naturally acceptable to us is to be related to the other to have this feeling of being related to the other and that is what we are calling as affection so if um, say some um, let me complete, just complete this for a minute okay. <laughs> so what we are saying is that if you do not feel related to the other right somewhere deep down you have a feeling of doubt a feeling of fear from the other mm-hmm. so this is the one thing which we have to start observing that if we do not have this feeling i mean this <coughs> you know acceptance of relationship with someone deep down there is some uncertainty there is some fear so in that sense we have to understand this relationship and accept this relationship only then we will feel assured only then we will be comfortable you know within mm-hmm. right. so for example when i am traveling in the train okay, <clears throat> i may not interact with the pers- everyone in, uh, traveling in the train but i want assurance from everyone right if somebody talks to me he must talk with respect right that expectation is there mm. right so that feeling of being related is what is something you know that i have to be very clear about that yes there is relationship and we are related and what is naturally acceptable to us is to be related Hmm. So if a na- if a, say a, a natural calamity happens somewhere you know in some other country in Africa or somewhere, then I feel Excellent. bad for the people if you know a lot of people die or they get hurt or something. I feel bad for them. Can we call that a feeling of affection? Hmm. I'll just. Okay. Deep down, you feel related, <clears throat> but you are not very clear about it. Hmm. You are not very clear about it. So, you are feeling related, but it is not so formulated. So, when somebody is hurt, you feel, you know, uncomfortable about it, right? Mm. You do something. Right. Yes. True. Okay. But what we are saying now is that okay, this is what it is. You know, relationship is there, so we have to understand it. We have to be conscious of it, and we have to accept it with that awareness. Then it will make all the difference. Mm-hmm. And what is the difference between affection and love? you find you know both affection and love we said affection is the feeling of being related to one or many while love is the feeling of being related to all 
Because we say I love so and so. You know, kind of extension of the feeling of affection. Or other words, you know, the affection is a specific, you know, kind of implication of the feeling of love. So when we say that we love so and so, we, we love our parents, our children, it is really a feeling of affection. Yeah, true. Okay. True, true. I mean, see what uh, we have uh, done here is, you know, we have tried to define these things in a very specific way, so that in the general use of the term, you know, they are interchangeably used. Right? Mm. So, we are not very clear about, you know, their uh, uh, precise meaning. So, what we have tried to do is to define the reality, that feeling first, uh, and then give some name to it. So, for example, we first define that, you know, we can be in a state where we feel related to all. This is the reality. Then this is called as love. Mm -hmm. right. okay. Then we can feel related to one or to many. This is what is called as affection. You may feel opposed to other. That is called feeling of jealousy. Mm -hmm. right. <clears throat> so this specific name, I mean, these words are used for this specific reality. So we are first defining the reality and then calling it by some name. Now, uh, today love is used in very different, you know, sense. Yes. I mean, there are many uh, sense in which this word love is used. So we are trying to make it specific. Okay. So this should be called affection, you know, our feeling of being related to one or many. In our terms, we will call it affection. Mm -hmm. Love, we are saying, you know, representing a reality where we feel related to everyone, to all. Okay. Yes. Uh, we talked about the feeling of care um, and, uh, you know, it's just thinking when that example of you know mother feeding the child. So when I'm feeding my child, I realize that I'm paying more attention to the body because I am uh, focusing on finishing what food that I have you know kept ready for the child. But uh, I feel this is necessary because uh, the child won't know how, you know what is good for him, how much to eat, and all. So, just to keep the child healthy, I feel like I have to uh, take that decision and uh, feed the child. Yeah. Can we move to the next uh, slide, Ajinji? <coughs> See, the point is that it is good to have this care, you know. When we have this feeling of affection, it expresses itself in terms of this, you know, uh, taking care of the body, the health of the body. So it is, uh, you know, quite okay to feed the child. But we only have to make sure that while feeding the child, while taking care of the health of the body, right, we are also taking care of the self. At least we are not violating it. At least we are not violating the self. So this is what is being said. Right. For example, when you are overfeeding the child, you know, force feeding the child and quite common today. So <clears throat> the child does not want to you know, eat or take you know take milk but you force feed because you think that the child you know has to grow healthy and the child is maybe finding it you know that the stomach is full and it does not need any more. Now when you are doing force feeding we are certainly, you know, thinking in terms of taking care of the body. But what about taking care of the self? Are we taking care of it or we are violating it? 
Hmm. We have to keep in mind that we have to take care of both the body as well as the soul. Hmm. At least we should, while taking care of one, we should not violate the other. <coughs> Hmm. Actually, now that I think Am about I it, to make it clear. Yeah, it is. It has become clear. I think now that I think about it, uh, when I look back, when the child was smaller, when the child was a baby and was breastfeeding, I really didn't decide how much the child should have, and the child could. Take what was needed. So I think, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, true. And in fact, that's what we have been saying. You know, when we are talking about education, sometime we said that <coughs> when it comes to the education of the children, the major part of the education has to be done for the parents. <laughs> One, two, two, five. Major part of the you know education. Uh, uh, which child has to receive has to come through the contact of the parents. So the parents have to have this understanding, understanding about life, you know, and they have to lead that life in a manner which becomes a good example for the child, which child can imitate and follow. So that is very significant. Mm -hmm. So the Here we are using care in terms of the in terms of the self, in terms of the body. <coughs> mm. Child has inquisitiveness, you know. He keep asking so many questions, right? Anything that is says around, it wants to understand, it wants to know. So it will keep asking questions. Now, if we have time and we are in a hurry, and if we shout at the child, right, that's going to have a very Ill effect mm -hmm. because the child may not ask the question in a lifetime. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, here we are saying care is to do with the taking care of the body, but in general usage, we say that you know we care about other people's feelings also. How the other person feels. So uh, <coughs> that's not care. Or what? What will we say for that? See, what we are saying is that, you know, as I said in the last session, uh, last question, uh, the question before that, you know, we are defining these feelings first, you know, as a reality, and then calling it by some name, mm. right? So what we are saying is that we are responsible towards my relative. You know? This is what we are calling as commitment. Right? Then as a part of the responsibility, when I can see that human being is not just the body, but the coexistence of self and the body. So I try to take care of both the self and the body. Mm -hmm. So two things now, you know, under this responsibility, I'm taking care of the self and I'm taking care of the body. Okay. So let us define it by two different words. That's all. Right? Okay. So we said, okay, let us we we will use this care as you know <coughs> for responsibility towards the body and guidance as responsibility towards the self. Right? Hmm. Under that feeling of guidance, I take care of the feeling, the understanding of the other. Under this care, I am taking care of the health of the body, of the relative. This is just giving you know, a specific name, so that when we are using these words to indicate those realities, there is no confusion. Mm. That is all. But there is nothing sacrosanct about this particular word representing this reality. What is important is that we have to understand the reality, right? And be with the reality. Okay. That is important. Okay, but to communicate, we need something, you know, some word. 
some representation. So when we were talking about this, you know, word and meaning, we said four things, if you remember. But I will not get into those details of the, those things. But we said that, yes, word is representing some reality. So when you say word, it is something, you know, some physical sound or something written. When you say meaning, it means describing some aspect of the reality. Mm. So we have to take care of the word and the meaning associated with the word. And then ultimately we have to see the reality which it is representing. And more than that, we have to see this reality in its completeness. So there are four aspects that we talked about. But I'm not going into the detail. We are just saying that, okay, let us look at the reality. For example, I have a feeling of you know being related to the other. This is the reality. Now let us call it by some name. Mm. Similarly, I feel responsible towards the body of my relative. You know, this is a reality. Let us call it by some name. And similarly, we have this feeling of you know responsibility towards the self of the relative. So this should be called, this is the reality. So this should also be called by some name. So that is what we are doing. You know. We are identifying the reality and assigning some you know, word to it, some name to it. Mm. Actually, this is better because normally when we talk of the human being, we don't really think of the body and the self separately. So I think it's all mixed up when we talk normally. Yeah, many things like, you know, this care and guidance are mixed up. Mm, yes. Most of the time we don't even take care of it and we don't uh, ensure this guidance because we have not, we have, we are not clear about this self. Mm. Similarly, this love and affection, what you are asking. Mm. All these words are quite intermixed. Which, you know, kind of uh, try to identify the reality and then give some name. And once we do that, then it, you know, we can clearly, you know, understand the difference between them. Mm. They are representing different realities. Mm. Yes. Um. When it comes to guidance, you mentioned that, you know, it is uh, taking care of the self. So now I'm thinking when we teach, like when we are, say we are a good teacher in maths or in English or something. So here also we are uh, taking care of the self of the student. So would we say this is different from guidance, being a good teacher in a particular subject? I would say that it is part of the guidance, right? Okay. So guidance is defined here, you know. <clears throat> you know, it in terms of taking the responsibility towards the development of the self, which I was just mentioning, right? Mm. So care has to do with taking care, you know, responsibility towards the body. Care is taking responsibility towards the self. Guidance. And taking responsibility of development of the self, this would mean ensuring right understanding and right feeling in the self of the relative, right? Mm. And that means ensuring this understanding of harmony at all levels of our being, starting from human being, self, you know, to the entire existence. And having this right feeling for each of these things. So that is the range. So in that sense, this guidance is a very broad thing, you know, mm. realize and work for it. Now, teaching a subject may be a part of it. Yes. Right. Okay. Teaching a subject may be a part of it. In fact, you know, if you remember, we had this question, you know, that these students don't respect us. We are so much devoted to our teaching and they don't respect. See, the problem is that we have not provided the necessary guidance to the students as far as these feelings are concerned, as far as the relationship is concerned. Right? 
so we have not helped them to understand respect and have that feeling of respect we have taught a subject right and they are trying to learn that subject mm -hmm. so either the parents or the teachers have not taken care of this guidance okay in its completeness so whatever is left that is creating problem mm -hmm. so it is good to teach your subject you know properly but it is not enough ultimately one teacher or all the teachers put together or the teachers and the parents all put together have to ensure this guidance you know it needs completeness mm -hmm. and we have seen this happening that the teachers who feel responsible towards the development of the self and you know starts working for it the students you know develop lot of you know respect for them lot of respect for them. Mm. um about excellence we said that excellence and competition are two different things but uh, today we, we have you know limited number of jobs and um, limited good colleges so some amount of competition don't you think is is required can we not uh, have excellence even through this kind of competition because when we have the entrance exams and all the best people come forward and so uh, we can achieve excellence through this kind of competition no see what is happening is that we are seeing things in a very limited perspective and when we see things in a limited perspective we are likely to have you know get into the problems like this so if you look at excellence right for excellence we have to ensure understanding of harmony and living in harmony at all levels of our being this is what we have been saying you know, right from the beginning this is how we have defined excellence mm -hmm. now for this we do not have to compete <laughs> yes we do not have to compete with other in fact there is a provision there is provision in this nature in this existence okay, for everyone to do this so if i am understanding harmony right and i am trying to live in harmony i will only be a help to you rather than you know in a position to you right so as can work for understanding the harmony and living in harmony okay this is there is a provision for this in the nature in the existence okay. now the problem today or what we need to do today is to develop the right kind of education system right which will make it available to all when we don't understand it in this wide perspective right we are not understanding the human being understanding particularly the self we are not understanding the relationship we are not understanding the system in the society you know harmonious society and now while undermining all that we think everything is physical facility so that we are discussing about human being equal to body once we assume that then we think everything you know that we have to achieve from outside is the physical facility so i get busy with physical facility right. i am not working for understanding and feeling for which there is no competition right. 
there is this competition for physical facility mm. if i have right understanding in me right feeling in me i can distribute to everyone and at i am not running short of it but if i have physical facility and i distribute it it is not there with me anymore so when you start working only for physical facility without this right understanding and right feeling then we are in trouble okay. so now this but see what you have said you know good colleges and good jobs hmm what does it mean ultimately it means through that you can get a you know get better physical facility more physical facility for that yes it is not possible to provide you know physical facility to everyone and that to in an unlimited amount because that is how we are you know kind of trained to think so there we have problem we cannot have unlimited physical facility for every, everyone we cannot have it even for one and therefore we cannot have jobs you know unlimited you know which can fit you with unlimited physical facility and we cannot have these colleges or engineering institutions or any professional institution which will you know make it possible for you to get such jobs so there you are in trouble and then of course you will get into competition there but is that what whole life is or physical facility is a part of my life as we said right in the first session three things are required right mm. the right understanding right relationship and physical facility so we keep saying that this right understanding and right feeling in relationship can be globalized right can be made universal right mm. distribute it as much as you want but when it comes to physical facility you do not need unlimited physical facility once you have this right understanding and right feeling you know and therefore you know a state of happiness within then the need for physical facility is very defined it is very definite and you can certainly produce more than what is required and therefore ensure prosperity and with that feeling of prosperity you can take care of your physical needs and you can you know think of nurturing others for what is right there is enough provision in nature in existence for what is not right right there is there is a struggle there is this competition see i can understand that but um, for the student i mean uh, you know how do i exp- because if i tell the student that you know Uh, to understand the harmony he will say first i have to get a job and i have to think about uh, salary i have to think about earning a livelihood um, so how do i sort of talk to the student we have to be clear i think we are not clear we have to be clear that to grow we have to work for excellence and in the process we cooperate and not compete so this is very important to ask that what leads to better growth competition or cooperation cooperation hmm. so with cooperation with collaboration we have to work for excellence and excellence is possible for everyone mm-hmm. right excellence working for excellence is possible for every one of us every one of us can understand the harmony and live ha- in harmony it will only help the others you know to work on it rather than you know deny the other and when you are saying competing with myself 
it essentially means working for excellence okay so this competition the problem is with you know with this competition the problem is that we have this feeling of opposition with the other if we do not have that feeling of opposition it is fine it will not be a competition it will become a collaboration it will become a cooperation <laughs> so then um like how competing with myself is okay then um healthy competition is also okay like uh, you know we have some sports and activities where we generally have yeah this is what we are saying that when you say healthy competition what it would mean that like i want to play football right Hmm. I want to play good football, you know, or play well, or play better than the other. What is the issue? <laughs> That has to be clear. Hmm. So, if you want to improve our playing, you know, reach to the maximum possibility. I do not have to compete with the other. I can. Collaborate with the other, and we two together can learn better. But then the game will be different. The game is about uh, winning or losing. <laughs> yes. Then the game will be better in the sense that it will lead to a state of happiness for myself and for the other. Today, mm -hmm. unhappiness for both of us. This is what we are saying. Then we have to change a lot of the systems that we have in place. Yes, true, true. Mm. This is what we said. You know, in the very first session, we said we have to transform from animal consciousness to human consciousness. <laughs> yes. From inhuman society to human society. <laughs> So lot of work in fact designing good plays and you know games and plays for the children would be a very big task because most of our games somehow you know are competitive in nature where first thing you do is you divide them in two teams right? and one has to win over the other <laughs> so we have created a position in relationship you do not want to win over the other you want to fulfill the other mm. in opposition you want to win over the other but people would argue that if you don't have competition there won't be any motivation to do better uh, you know to to <coughs> get you know like in science so many innovations and so many things have happened this, so this is what we are saying you know this motivation for innovation and for growth comes from working for excellence Mm. so there will be enough motivation and there will be enough innovation you know because you will, when you are working for excellence or even you want to work for excellence you will do lot of you know investigation into these different levels of harmony and you will have so many you know innovations for example today <laughs> the area of human psychology right mm. is just left you know because self we have not we do not have this clarity about this self so very little is done in the name of human psychology today similarly this relationship is being neglected right mm. this whole lot of work on behavioral science 
and on sociology. Right? So, so many areas will be opened up and which are very important and which, you know, are creating problem otherwise. Yes. Hmm. So many new areas of innovation will open up. Right? And this growth, we have to see the growth of the self and growth of the body both. Today the growth of the self is just neglected. And we are busy with the growth of the body, or growth of the physical facility. <laughs> now that is creating more problems than solutions. Mm. I mean, I was telling this morning class example, you know. In this cold weather, attending this class from 5.30 to 7.30, right, from different parts of the country and very senior people, okay, and no certificate, no job, right, you know, kind of uh, promised. Hmm. People are, you know, attending this, you know, some 200 people are attending every moment, morning. Many of them are attending with their family. Hmm. And they are finding that it is leading to growth, you know, their growth as an individual, their growth as a family, even as an institution. And they are able to look in within and, you know, look at all this reality and you know, kind of understand so many things. So a lot of innovations are also taking place. Mm -hmm. yes. Motivation for innovation and growth will come from working for excellence, which is the basic need of every human being. But basic need of the self, not the body. That we have to understand. Mm. Okay. Um, uh, when it comes to this feeling of glory, um, we are saying, you know, we have glory for somebody who is working on excellence. So, uh, like, you know, we seek name and fame. So there are movie actors, there are sports people, there are so many people who are famous today for achieving something in their field. So should we not have feeling of glory for people like that? <clears throat> I mean, my simple answer would be that if they are working for excellence, then yes. Mm. If not, you have to ask your natural acceptance. Mm. When I think about it, you know, I see these uh, sports people and so many people like that, they come on TV for advertising for liquor and so many wrong things, which I think a lot of children see and they might be getting influenced. So yeah, that is not something that I feel good about. Yeah, in fact, these people are there in the scene for one year, two years, five years, but then lost. Nobody takes, you know, note of them. But there have been people in the history, you know, few thousand years back, and we are still remembering them. Right? Mm. We are still remembering them, we are still taking inspiration from them. Mm. So I was quoting this example, you know, this Buddha, you know, no, almost 2,500 years back, you know, he was there. And today we know so much about Buddha and very little about the kings who were there at that time. And <laughs> you know, large kingdoms mm. were there. And in fact, many of them we know through the you know story which is you know told about Buddha. You know how these kings came across. Buddha, whether they agreed, disagreed on all that, you know. So, people will have this feeling of glory 
if you are working for excellence they will preserve that you know feeling and pass it on from one tradition to another one generation to another generation can we have the feeling of glory for ourselves is it similar to saying like self pride yeah if we are working for excellence we can have <laughs> glory for ourselves <laughs> so that is very simple but when it comes to pride we have to check you know whether this pride includes this ego mm -hmm. in it or not if it does not have this sense of ego then it is same as glory right mm -hmm. if it does not have that sense of you know it, you know it does not uh, oh if the pride does not have this sense of ego no no okay it has a sense of ego then it is not same as glory if then we can call it as self pride mm. okay so that clarity has to be made that this pride is not you know including this ego mm. you have to do your right evaluation and see that yes you are working for excellence so if that is what you mean by pride we can call this glory as self pride or self glory as self pride mm. how about national pride like uh, pride for the nation what would we call that so what we are saying is that a society or a nation which is working for excellence will have a feeling of glory for it hmm. and if it does not include this ego you know claiming that i am better than the other right if i can mm. you know work for excellence without having this ego over evaluation then we can call it you know as national pride or pro pride for the community for the society which in which i live and which is working for excellence mm. yeah i can see a lot of times uh, that does come in when we talk of national pride then we try to put down the other countries yes to show ourselves as better yes yeah. so that you have to take care mm -hmm. and one of the indication would be that if i am working for excellence then i will have the pride for the nation and my nation will work for the growth of the other nations Mm. It, that will be an indicator of my working for excellence rather than fighting with the other nation or denying the other nations or opposing the other nations mm. okay Uh, the feeling of gratitude is it the same as being thankful to someone or being thankful for something as we said gratitude is the feeling for any help that we have received for our self development so we want to reach to this excellence and any help that we have received from anybody in the process of this self development receiving this you know achieving this excellence we have this gratitude right for them mm -hmm. so this would certainly include being thankful to someone or for something so that is a part of my feeling of gratitude that if somebody has helped me in some way mm -hmm. or he helped me with something yes i will feel gratitude towards him it is just a part of it okay um as teachers we find that our students uh, 
uh, seem to be grateful to us or to whatever for some time but then they seem to forget about it even for our own children we do so much for them but then there are times when they are so ungrateful so how to make them feel this gratitude how to develop this feeling in them see the important thing is that what are we giving them if we are giving them something which has continuity then they will have this feeling of gratitude in continuity this is important so ultimately we have to help them ensure right understanding and right feeling in them and then they will help have continuity of feeling of gratitude if we are doing that they will have this continuity if we are not doing this ultimately if we are not able to ensure this right understanding and right feeling in, in my child in my student then they are likely to lose it because then their gratitude will be based on something specific so you are saying that if we are just more focused on physical facility then they will be grateful only for some time then they forget about it yes this is what is happening you know most of the rich people you know they earn so much by fair means or by corruption and provide it to their children right and after some time they get used to it right and they keep asking for more and more and if you are not able to provide more and more you know, they start feeling you know uncomfortable with you mm-hmm. yes so you are giving them something which is not enough for for them to get fulfilled in their life mm. they will keep complaining mm. they rather spoil their health you know by overeating and over you know sleeping and all that kind of thing you no know, irregular lifestyle and all that and then after some time they think that you know you have not been responsible to give mm. like you know guidance so if you are giving something which does not have continuity then they are in trouble and then in reflection you are also in trouble <laughs> yes um today you know um this so called falling in love or having boyfriends girlfriends this has become a major issue for our students and lot of times uh, they get distracted from their studies so how can we resolve this how can we get them to see that this is uh you know not something good for them see uh, i mean we will look into this in more detail that this feeling of love is something which has to be understood right at least the feeling of affection has to be understood right and when we understand mm-hmm. we are able to see that this feeling is related to the self and not to the body Mm. right and if we can understand this then we'll be able to be responsible towards the you know themselves okay mm. and <clears throat> towards their own self and the self of the other 
and when we are able then when they are you know responsible towards their self then one part of it is that you know they will become more sincere towards their studies right so the important thing is that how do we see this love do i see it as a relationship between the body or relationship between the self then do i understand the meaning of relationship between the self do i understand the self all these issues are important mm -hmm. so if you look at this you know preconditioning related to love you know the main, more the kind of common misunderstanding okay. are we talking about this excitement from sensation from preconditioning right or we are talking about the feeling right feeling which is naturally acceptable mm. today if you see we see it as sensation many of us see this love as sensation so there is this lust right this is you know this has to do with getting the you know favorable sensation from the other so if this is the love then it does not have the continuity similarly if it is you know out of this preconditioning so we have this infatuation what we call right? so love at first sight and after some time hate also at the first sight <laughs> right? similarly there is this now in most of these colleges you know not even professional colleges even in schools now right this is a preconditioning that i must have some you know girlfriend or a boyfriend right and now there are also this you know preconditioning that we should have more than one you know the one who has more girlfriend or boyfriend you know is more smart and all that now if this is what is love this also does not have continuity and we will get into problem right you know sooner or later so this is what is happening what we are saying is that love is something which is born out of my you know acceptance of feeling of being related to all right born out of my this natural acceptance you know, for feeling of being related to all born out of my right understanding and when i have this feeling of being related to all i am responsible towards all right that will have continuity that will have continuity so if you look at this you know circle that lo1 we have this love for sensation part we have lust and for preconditioning part we have this infatuation so today what we have is more of lust and infatuation then the love so we have to understand love at least we have to understand affection and have that feeling of affection which will ensure that this feeling is towards the self you know and not the body and when we have the understanding of affection then we'll have the continuity of this feeling of affection and that will ensure happiness within myself and with that feeling of happiness within myself i will be expressing this feeling of affection to the other and not being dependent on the other but being responsible towards the other that is what is going to work yes yes true when we have this feeling of love do we still have the feeling of affection yeah i said this you know this affection is a specific case of love mm. i mean as we have defined it when i have feeling of you know related feeling of being related to all i certainly have feeling of being related to one and many which is the feeling of affection mm 
Okay. We see uh, in our campuses, uh, at least for some some time back, there was a lot of ragging. Now, uh, what would you say? I mean, when the students, uh, you know, they justify it as interacting with the new students. So, what can we tell them? What is the difference between ragging and um, interaction? Yes. So there are a lot of differences, you know, between this ragging and response, but I will not get into these details of each one of them. But briefly mention, you know, that when we are not able to relate to the other, right, with the newcomer, then we may tease them and make fun of them and all that, right? Mm. We are not even concerned about its impact on the newcomer. And of course, it hurts the other, and that is ragging. Mm. And you can recall and see that, you know, what you felt, you know, how you felt when you mm. were ragged, right? Mm. So this is important thing that, what is this? Um, am I related to the other? Or am I not related to the other? Am I feeling related to the other and you know, doing what I have to do for the relationship? Right? Then it is interaction. If I am not feeling related, right? And many times, you know, being in a position, then my interaction would look like ragging. So this is what is ragging. On the other hand, interaction means you know, that I feel related to the other. And once I feel related to the other, I have that feeling of you know, affection for him. It, then you can find out what will you feel you know, when a relative comes to your family. We feel happy about mm -hmm. it. We want to share many mm -hmm. things with them and also listen from them. This exchange of feeling and words is satisfying for all of us. And that is what we are calling as interaction. So we'll can feel concerned with them, we take care of their immediate needs and facilitate them to set their things in order and so on. So the question is not, you know, having ragging or not having ragging. The question is having right interaction. And this is what we should work for. Yes. So next time when there is a you know, new batch coming, we have to plan this interaction you know, with them. So Triple ITV you know, and many other colleges now are doing this experiment that we should give them a red carpet welcome rather than harassing them. They, are, and us, they have come new to the family, so they need care. And we should do that. Now, I think with the student induction program, uh, those things are yes. taking shape. True, true. In fact, this is one of the major issues in discussion of uh, this, uh, you know, UHV discussion in uh, SIP, student induction program this difference between interaction and ragging and whether we have to interact or we have to rag them. Mm. Yes, with that, a lot of improvement is taking place too. Mm. You had mentioned, uh, you know, having the feeling and expression of feeling. Could you uh, elaborate a little bit on this? Yeah, we have been talking about it in many incidents, but I can just put them all together. So when we have this feeling, let's say feeling of affection, right? <clears throat> or let's take this feeling of, uh, you know, respect. Okay. This feeling is in the self. And 
there is desirability for this continuity of the feeling and we can have the continuity of this feeling of respect in the self but when it comes to the expression of feeling right we use this expression as and when necessary to express this feeling so for example when i meet someone you know someone comes to my house i shake hands with him right mm. or give a you know flower to him now this presenting a flower is expression of my feeling of respect for him mm. so we want the continuity of this feeling but we may not want the continuity of this expression so for example if somebody you know welcomes me by shaking hand and then he holds on to my hand you know <laughs> leave it then i will be in trouble right so their continuity is not desirable but i definitely want that he should have this continuity of feeling of respect for me so this is the difference yes so some of these expressions are being mentioned here you know if i have this trust feeling of trust in me then i will think in terms of cooperating with you this cooperating with you is an expression of my feeling of trust so if you are lacking competence you know i will try to improve upon your complaints rather than you know your com uh, competence rather than getting irritated or getting angry right mm. we talked about when we are talking about this yes. trust mm. similarly if i have this feeling of affection then i will have commitment you know commitment for responsibility towards the self and the body of my relative right so this expression of the feeling may not be you know desired with continuity but the feeling is something which is desired with continuity and feeling is in the self and the expression is with the outside you know hmm expression is with the outside and it is done as and when necessary as and when it is considered important okay but many times if we are not clear about the self and we are not clear about this you know feeling in the self then we keep emphasizing on the expression of feeling mm. so getting worried you know how big flower was presented to me the small flower the big flower right? <laughs> yes flower or the flowery words mm. yes i mean we can get into more details about it but i am just giving hints you know. mm. yes also uh, we had talked little bit about Oh, no competition and collaboration or no cooperation so if you could just you know um yeah this again is a very detailed you know thing to be discussed you know. but i will briefly give the you know important points so what we are saying is that when we feel related to the other we cooperate we collaborate on the other hand when we have a feeling of opposition we compete Hmm. Now our natural acceptance is for relationship and cooperation and not for opposition. Hmm. Right. This we should be very clear. This we can verify within ourselves. Hmm. Now in today's world view, we assume that there is struggle for survival and survival of the fittest. 
right? Rather than a relationship of mutual fulfillment in nature. So the whole perception is, you know, kind of uh, uh, made in this manner. While we have natural acceptance for relationship, we are taught that there is a struggle for survival and survival of the fittest in the nature. Mm -hmm. And also have to do the same. Once I'm, you know, I assume this to be true, then I'm in trouble. Right? Then I'm in trouble. Because I will try to develop this feeling of struggle and keep struggling which will make me unhappy, which will also make others unhappy. So that is the problem. Now, if you ask yourself, when does our mutual growth, our mutual competence becomes better? When we help each other, whenever needed, wherever needed. When we work separately in isolation or when we work separately in opposition. When we are helping each other. Yeah. When you are working in collaboration, in cooperation with the feeling of relationship, then we will have a better growth. We will be able to improve our competence better. Yeah. yeah. So we do have to work for collaboration, for cooperation with the feeling of relationship and not for competition. If you are working for competition, we are in trouble. First, we have this feeling of opposition between and making others also in trouble. I mean, many of these you know, industries today, now they are saying, you know, we want people who can do teamwork. Because now they said that the teamwork is so important. Yes, true. Yes. They are competing with the other team. <laughs> they are competing with the other team. Uh -huh. They are competing. They want teamwork, but they want competition with the other company, other yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, that is the thing. <laughs> they, want to compete with others, so they are in opposition with other industries. And they now have, they have realized that even to do that, they need cooperation within the industry. Yes, Sandeep Murada has written that understanding and learning are relative before complete understanding. Competition being a byproduct my skill will no, not improve if I don't play against someone like chess or football. My skill or understanding will go static, isn't it? See, this is what, you know, we uh, can, you know, always make a mistake. When we say we will not work for competition, you start thinking that we will not work for excellence also. <laughs> We are not saying that. We are saying that we continue to work for excellence, right? But for working for excellence, I have to cooperate with others, you know, take everybody, you know, in confidence and go with them. So I must have this feeling of relationship and with that, I have to, come, you know, compare, I mean, collaborate and you know, kind of cooperate with others rather than compete with the other. This is what we have just explained, you know. Yeah. But if you do not have that sense of working for excellence also, then you are in problem. Yeah, there is a lot of things to do for that excellence. Yes. A lot of things to be done. In fact, you will do more than what you are doing now. More than what you are doing, exactly. We are getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning and so many things we are doing. Uh, I have three questions in my mind uh, regarding uh, harmony in the body and harmony in the self and these nine values. Uh, first thing is that uh, adolescent, adolescent actually uh, or generally uh, they are unaware of their uh, regeneration organs of the body or we call sexual organs of the body, uh, self 
uh, organs as well as the organs of opposite uh, sex and uh, their functioning or uh, uh, the activities or the safety or how to take care of those these all things they are unaware uh, second question is uh, in marriage is uh, love is supreme no doubt but what is the role of sexual intercourse now uh, 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 the children uh, sorry uh, the youth before marriage they they don't know these things and uh, there may be problem uh, or we see sometimes in the society uh, problems occur because of uh, Uh, this uh, non understanding of uh, these things uh, therefore i want clarity on this uh, third is uh, can uh, the content of uh, these things means uh, uh, our uh, 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 re or uh, regeneration organs of the body their understanding and uh, understanding of uh, uh, sexual intercourse in marriages can this uh, include in our uhv uh, syllabus because i have attended uh, three four uhv uh, workshops as well as uh, uh, now i am attending this uh, morning uh, uh, workshop but uh, i have not come across uh, related to these uh, issues therefore uh, uh, Mm, uh, these three questions came in my mind and i raised it here uh, thank yes. you namaste 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 see what uh, we are saying that this what we are discussing you know uh, in human values is the basic you know values okay the basic fundamental you know feelings that we have to have in our interaction you know with the human being with the rest of nature and all that so that is the range which we have defined you know now as we said when it comes to expression of feelings when it comes to working out the systems right that detailing we are not doing in this course so we have higher courses like we have this course on you know understanding human being you know comprehensively this yes with three course where we are trying to go deeper into the self deeper into the existence then we have another course where we are trying to look at our behavior and look at our systems you know so the society and the societal systems in detail and then we will have this courses specific courses which will work out the further details like you know, so for example <laughs> one important issue is that when we are talking about this family this marriage right <clears throat> is it a marriage at the level of body only or sent you know mainly it is a marriage at the level of self at the level of acceptance of relationship this is one question we are raising here and we want to get the answer right then given that yes it is the self which is accepting the relationship and which has you know willing to fulfill the relationship and in the and in the process it will use the body as an instrument right then we will define how it will use the body as an instrument in the process this is important this we are talking about so the question that we want to settle in this course is that it is the self who has this feeling of relationship right and when we have defined this relationship of husband and wife you know then there are many responsibility which the self has to fulfill and one of the responsibility is to continue the tradition right of human family human society of human body so this is one responsibility it has to fulfill right this has to be clear now if it has to fulfill this responsibility then there are certain details you know about how it should be done and how it can be done right. so that we will discuss in those detailed courses you know which have to be developed 
after this ehb 2 3 and 4 we'll have the you know courses which are value based you know so which have this value in the base and with that those detailings are given but this much is you know what we are doing is also very important because today we don't understand the self and therefore we don't understand the feeling and therefore we think that you know we are related only in terms of body right so we are not taking this body you know as something to fulfill the responsibility of procreation responsibility of continuing with the human tradition right continuing with the human body but we think that this body itself is the source of happiness so those basic values we are discussing here but once they are they are in place then yes we will work out the details so we will you know we can have a course saying that you know given this fact that yes we are related at the level of self and the two selves have taken this commitment you know to be as husband and wife and with that it has you know they have many responsibility one of, of the, them is this procreation second is this you know taking care of the education of the child right education and sanskar of the child third is ensuring the necessary physical facility by way of production right? so all these are the responsibility taken by the self and in order to fulfill that they have to do many things and then each of these things can be now expanded as a you know course which talks about it in detail but certainly we are not doing this here yes true but we should do it somewhere you know once things are in place once we have this foundation course on human values and then these two higher courses then we can work out these value based you know courses then then what thank you yes we know okay, means uh, uhv3 or 4 yeah yeah in 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 uhv3 or 4 uh, this content may uh, come there or uh, clarity Not, more clarity <coughs> will be yeah, there more more of it will be developed but it will not be a specific course on this you know after the hv4 we have to develop these courses that okay if i have to ensure procreation if i have to ensure right education and sanskar for the child what do we do right similarly if yeah, yeah. have to identify the need of the family and produce it by way of production right production which is cyclic and mutually enriching what do we do so we have to have these courses then you know developed so you will not get the yes. you know much of detail even in 3 and 4 but you will get more expansion on what we have talking now you know so certain things you will get there but not the full detail of it for full detail of it we have to develop this other courses you know. so we yeah. just made the beginning but lot of it has to be done now in the light of this yeah uh, sir sir hello yes ha huh. in christianity there are ma- there are marriage preparatory uh, workshops five days workshop and there all uh, these uh, things are explained to these youth yes so that uh, after marriage there may not be problems in uh, families regarding body and regarding soul according to themselves yes thank you thank you dhanyawad yeah we should you know discuss and develop all these things you know like sarmila ji is writing a book on parenting you know. so when you want to become a parent you have some qualification required Right. so how to take care of the child you know so that kind of thing you know and yes sir yes sir every yes. society in fact has tried to work out some systems right so we must look into them and then come up with something very concrete so there will be something yes. in there will be something in islam there will be something in you know uh, kind of 
Buddhism or any of these systems, if you see, they will have some details about it. In Indian tradition, for example, there is this notion of 16 sanskaras, you know. And it, yeah. each, each of these sanskaras, they are talking about so much of detail about how to do it. So all these things have to be, you know, looked into and you know, we have to come up with something very concrete. Yes, true. Sharmila ji is working on this book on parenting. She has almost you know, completed. So we might have it in publication in few months. But okay. I, 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 I welcome this area. Uh, so. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, sir. Sir, uh, I have uh, started our family uh, meetings uh, where we are having certain uh, topics on which the speaker is uh, talking and then we have open discussion. So we started yes. that and yes, uh, I'm also trying to put this uh, uh, concept or proposals of universal human values into it. The problem which I am facing, uh, of course, it's only uh, one session we had. The problem which I am facing is uh, the preconditioning. How to break the preconditioning, or uh, rather, how to uh, overcome the preconditioning of the others? This is one question which uh, I am always uh, facing difficult because uh, they are so uh, connected to what they have already uh, studying, uh, studied, or learned. They don't want to deviate from uh, that. So uh, while putting the proposal, uh, due to their uh, preconditioning, they are not even uh, ready to uh, listen to it. That is one uh, question, how to overcome that preconditioning. And second one is, uh, we say that uh, food, sleep, fear and mating, these acts uh, of human are similar to animal. Ahar, Nidra, Bhai, So uh, there, this Fear is one of the feelings which is common in uh, animals as well as uh, uh, human beings. But we don't find it anywhere uh, in the uh, feelings which we have de uh, defined. So where do we put this fear, uh, the feeling uh, in anim uh, human beings? Yes, sir. See, I mean, I would say that this, you know, handling this preconditioning immediately is not quite, you know, desirable. First, try to relate to them. Okay. When they seem related to you, uh -huh. then some is going to be related. So, sir, your voice is uh, not coming. I said that when you they feel related to you, uh -huh. then you can think of handling the preconditioning. Okay. So don't do it that in a hurry. Okay. okay. That is one thing I am saying. Okay, sir. The uh, second thing about this fear. Fear is basically absence of trust. Okay. Yeah. So we have defined trust. Okay, okay. Absence of trust is what is fear. Okay, okay. Yes. So as okay. we said, you know, that we are not putting too much of emphasis on the absence of feeling. Absence mm -hmm, of right. Mm -hmm, right, right, right. Understand the right feeling. You can see what it implies, you know. Yes. Not the absence of it. Okay. Yes. So you have fear from someone, right? You are not able to have this feeling of trust. Yes. But that uh, fear is necessary to survive also, survival also. Because whenever, if you don't have fear, uh, you may meet uh, certain accidents and uh, means, uh, uh, and that could cause a uh, fatal uh, for yourself. See, with trust, I am able to decide what to do. Mm -hmm. With fear, you know, we try to stop what we do not have to do. Okay, okay. Right, so which is better? 
it is also uh, always uh, to decide what i have to do yes so with trust we are able to do that yeah 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 yes sir. thank you sir thank you very much okay thank you very uh, much are we are we going to continue this uh, after uh, this month after this month yes yes uh, okay yes. okay thank you very much sir that would thank be a you, great thank you yeah. thank you is uh, dr anup kumar and then yeah, hello yeah hello yes good morning all myself dr anup kumar gaude and uh, i am from uh, mumbai sn college maharashtra sir first i would like to express my gratitude towards uh, ganesh sir rajul astana sir and umesh yadav sir who has uh, uh, inspired me and uh, like ekal avya he has become the best archer and with his determination and dedication i really consider you all as dronacharya and would like to work on this sir i uh, first of all i want to say some of my sharing and ask question also uh, i have done brahma vidya that is a mental physics and it was it is a teaching of uh, guru dingle me who is from tibet and uh, it focuses on three and i could find the content of uhvc very much similar to that as we are focusing on the needs of the body and self in that it is focused on uh, human being in body mind and spirit so uh, first and even when i started this before joining uhvc i started uhvc in august i was taking students to global pagoda it is because i am uh, working as a associate professor in bhainder and in bhainder there is a global vipassana pagoda and uh, there is a meditation of uh, goenka ji of anapan session of 10 minutes and every year we take our students there and we do that uh, meditation for 10 minutes in that global pagoda and after that when we talk to the student they really have some uh, different feeling and uh, i i i i just wanted to share that that students really want this uh, work on self and that the journey of self and uh, it is a great work which aict has started and as i belong to actually commerce college but yes uh, we are into the formation of uhvc now my question one other i have three questions in my mind one is i have started the journey of this uh, self exploration and uh, i am happy in myself in my family society and nature now when i have realized that if i am able to control my inner world and i am not dependent on the outside circumstances so my happiness is not dependent on others so sometimes i feel that i am self content and sometimes i go even uh, apart from my family and friends because i am happy in myself so sometimes i feel that Uh, uh, my happiness is not dependent on this and i'm fulfilled in myself so that happens journey of self and uh, not loneliness but happy in self that is a first question whether uh, uh, it is a journey of self exploration only that is the first question second question is uh, if we can have the in self study of self mind conscious mind and subconscious mind because if that concept can be uh, introduced to the student and uh, one thing when we talk about this nine feelings why this faith faith why it is uh, not covered in this nine feelings so these are the what, questions in my mind what said yeah. faith yeah. faith 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 sir faith yeah. because of faith yeah faith i feel ki uh, faith in self faith in god and uh, in the power of in that in that energy which is there uh, throughout us so when i find this uh, if we can means uh, if we can the uh, a one is subconscious mind and subconscious mind if we can have that content in this 
to the stu- introduce to the student at maybe at higher level and uh, faith quality why it is not covered in this and the self exploration when we are happy sometimes feels that uh, means even my friends they say ki now you are not coming too much in the social activities and all that so i was sometimes get confused in it okay sir and thanks okay. a lot for this morning session yes sir yeah see <clears throat> what we are saying is that if we understand the harmony and we have this feeling of harmony then we will be comfortable with it this is part 1 and part 2 is that we will be comfortable with others also we will be in harmony with others also so if i am comfortable within it is not negation of being in harmony with others in fact if i am not uncomfortable if i am not comfortable within and i am trying to relate to the other i will create more problem so it is good that you know you are becoming more comfortable within then you will be able to behave properly with others right you will not have lot of show and pomp but you will be able to better relate to the other so what will happen is that you know for the time being there may be shift you know there may be you know uh, kind of uh, people may be observing some gap that you are not behaving the way you are behaving properly but <clears throat> soon they will realize that yes you are behaving better than you were behaving before so these two are not contradictory that being in harmony within and being in harmony with others in fact the first one is a help to the other so this is what i have to say about this you know so i have to work for being in harmony within myself and as we go on right it will also become being in harmony with the world outside the second thing about this conscious and subconscious in fact we t- did talk about this conscious subconscious and superconscious when we are talking about this self so i will not uh, kind of respond to that in detail now but you can go back and see you know that we have already talked about these three things the conscious and subconscious and superconscious regarding the faith you know what we are saying is that <coughs> we can explore and understand whatever is given to us as a proposal that would make it better okay that would make it better so we are not saying that you know if there is some there are some great people who have looked at some you know, understood the reality and they are giving some proposal regarding that we are saying that we certainly should listen to them you know and then start verifying within our own self so it is not doubting them it is accepting them as good people who have given the proposals and they must be worth you know but let us explain and ex- kind of explore and see for ourselves particularly for the grown up people this is what would be more effective for the children hello i can't just take it as true and start imitating but for grown up we are saying that it is better to take it as a proposal and explore and see for oneself so what we are saying that instead of having faith have understanding and therefore trust that will be more you know kind of stronger than um, just having the faith without understanding it and it is i am a say i am a devotee of krish sri krishna when i go when i see the deity 
when i see the dt you know the feeling i develop is the very basic of existence mm. my so that is that is not included in you know we are not feeling that you know that type of feeling we are not able to sense in the list of feeling but we are learning though the feeling of the feeling i develop i see in the my deity is a very basic of my existence it's a very basic it is not uh, i'm not able to list out that sort of feeling in the feeling we are uh, enlisted probably will des- will will have more opportunity to discuss on that this uh, think over this you know this feeling of love yeah and this feeling of guidance right. on the part of you know whomever we place very high and this feeling of gratitude glory and reverence on part of the one who is you know uh, uh, accepting this guidance from this you know realized ones i i one thing i really understood from the last uh, say one week there is a language which we use like the, the english language which we which we use it is inadequate to express our describe our feelings and emotions it is very inadequate so people go wrong like you know we use the word you no know, take care of your body i mean take care of your body so i mean like a lot of things are there like you know, i mean we are I mean, we get into mis you know confusion mixing up the things and you know keeping it apart there are two taking an example simple example see you, you take trust trust as i explore it is absolutely a noun it is nothing to do with a verb but sometimes we use it as a verb then confusion starts so you know these are this these are all the lacunas you know we experience you know the gap we experience in the language we use like yeah but what i have to say is that this language any language for that matter has limitation the reality that it is trying to describe is much more than the language so we have to use the language and we have to transcend the language right and uh, it is our good to draw our attention towards the reality but ultimately we have to start observing the reality directly correct i mean we let us yes. connect with the rea- reality not with the language that is yes. what i think i don't yes. know to to i don't know to be very abstract Uh, say there there is something like you no know, feeling and expression of the feeling and we have we have taken affection as an example and the expression of affection is care and you know guidance and affection uh, no the feeling we have in continuity affection is rather you no know, not continuous then care and guidance cannot be considered as a feeling at all or a value at all because it is being an expression of con- affection it is not continuous it cannot it is not qualified to be i mean value care and expression no, no guidance cannot be considered as a value at all because it is not in continuous it's in the form of an expression of affection so these are all the confusions we come across true 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 so a lot of things have to be you know kind of seen you know with lot of you know in depth analysis we have just made the beginning we have just made the beginning even this care and guidance if you take them as feeling it is different if you take them as expression it is different you know so all these things yes we have to you know investigate deeper and deeper in more depth and more width true thank you sir let me have your grace and blessing for the day thank you thank you thank you sridhar ji very much thank you
my question is related to the respect after analyzing for last 5 months in terms of the respect why we should expect respect from others see each one of us at any given place maybe family level or workplace or friendship we do our work and why we should expect a respect expecting something from others is causing the trouble in terms of respect so if we just focus on our work and proceed further i think there will not be any problem with others that's what i feel sir yeah true but should we have this feeling of respect in ourselves for others yes yeah that is what we are saying yes that is what we are saying yeah so when we expect the respect then the ego problem comes yes respected not respected respecting or avoiding these kind of questions will come but if we keep on working on our work and our ambitions without affecting others certainly yes the the problem of ego or respect will not come into the picture that's what i feel sir yeah, so what we are saying that we must have right understanding and right yes. feeling in this yes. case meaning of respect for everyone yes if we have this feeling of respect for everyone it will give us you know a state of harmony and happiness within and when we share it with others it will give happiness to the other also yes that is what we are saying yeah